Mailbag time. Oh, I've got quite a few things here. This is like two weeks worth, so let's see what we got. I've been playing with a new editor recently. I tried to start using DaVinci Resolve instead of Adobe Premiere. I've been using Premiere ever since I started doing videos. I've been using that the entire time. And uh, I've started playing with DaVinci Resolve and it seems to be working okay. Oh, sort of stuff. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. I got these thinking I needed them. Turns out, actually, I don't think I did because I measured it wrong. Well, I didn't measure it wrong. I measured it correctly, but I interpreted the results incorrectly. So what was happening is, is a piece of equipment I'm trying to repair. There will be a video on it, probably after this, I expect. And I measured the filter because the filter appeared to be blown because it's basically there's a dead short across the mains output put a high voltage across it is registering a short and I thought the filter's blown anyway I'm thinking actually maybe the filter isn't blown at least by the measurements later on we discovered actually no nah, filter was powering was what was blown because the, the value I was getting changed when I unplugged the stuff that was powering so you'll see that in the video anyway but I bought some filters thinking I needed to replace the filter thinking that there's a capacitor inside which is shorted out and blown Anyway, um, it wasn't that. So I bought some of these filters. Chunky ones. And now I don't think I need them. I might use them one day for something, but... Uh, oh well. I've got so many projects on my bench right now. I really need to clean this off. That's something I'm fixing. Well, actually, that's no, not. That's something I need to put away. That's something I'm fixing. There's some other stuff over here. I've got about four projects on this desk. We've got to catch up with these. What are these? G4PC40K. And that should be what's in here. It is. So. This is for repair projects. Excellent. I've got the parts I need to continue fixing that. Well, some of the parts anyway. I think I'm suspicious about that part there as well. That TO220 package there. I'm waiting for that as well, so I think I might do that one at the same time. But uh, anyway, and I definitely need one of these because it's definitely blown. And I'm doing a video about that too. Ah, right, great. There's an iPhone I was fixing. I had some problems. Oh, that's right. Now I remember. I was fixing an iPhone. The dock connector was bad. So I ordered some from China. Also ordered some locally because I got impatient. I should have waited. Because I'm now still waiting for stuff in China. And uh, that phone needs repair. I've already replaced the dock connector. It's now got some spares. So um, these are for the iPhone 6S Plus. Someone gave me one. They said, hey, have this phone. You know, it turns out Logiball's bad. <laughs> So I did all the repairs to it and the thing's still dead because the actual logic board has been fried. So, no, well, it happens. Ah, <laughs> how's that for timing? Got a nice case too. That's nice. Wow. Okay, it's got a crack in it, but yeah, it's also to protect the logic ball. Did that job, didn't it? So I was just saying about the iPhone logic ball being bad, and I was waiting for something for China. I was waiting for this, a replacement iPhone logic ball. So now I actually have all the bits I need, and hopefully this ball doesn't have any faults on it. Excellent, I can finish fixing that iPhone. There'll be a video on that. C245966. Now, some of you may know what this is already, just by the code. There will be links for this down below, just like all the other stuff. Be it possible, I'll put links in below. If you're interested in anything, maybe you want to buy it yourself. Also, done some new merch recently, and I was doing a live stream. A couple of things come out of that. One is that when I'm adjusting the resistance standard with fixed resistors, the value has to be perfect. 
and that was something that came out in the live stream. And there's a couple of people commenting on the live stream. I can't, unfortunately, I can't remember who actually said it. I think there was a couple of commenters on it. And one said, oh, I should do a shirt on that. I did do a shirt on that. And so there's now a shirt that says it has to be perfect. The word perfect is slightly offset to the right, and the F is out of alignment and smaller font and twisted a little bit, so it's not perfect. <laughs> it's the whole point. And then also did a second shirt, which was um, more digits is better. Uh, uh, that's just one of the things I say sometimes when I'm doing videos. And it's got like a ten and a half digit readout, with the last digit being a one. <laughs> to show you always need one more digit. Anyway, so, you know, get distracted. So this is a soldering iron tip, a big one. So this is actually for my Jabe UD 1200 soldering station, which I use and I've done lots of videos on, well, using lots of videos. I've actually done a review on this thing. And I had a big soldering iron tip and it failed, it actually blew up. And I thought, well, I, I kind of need a big tip because the biggest tip I've got is this one now, right? This is not big enough. I've got a big tip now. I think I've overcompensated. Yeah, I think this tip is actually bigger than I thought it was going to be. So I thought this width was going to be about the same as this. No. <laughs> hey, but at least I've got a decent tip now. Let's turn it on and see what actually happens. It might take a little while to come up. Bit of mess there. Ooh. Well, that came out pretty damn quickly. Considering how much mass is there, that looks fine. Quick check with the solder. Yep, it's definitely molten. So, we've got a big box here yet, which is, looks like it's had some rough treatment in the post. I can tell this is a polystyrene box. I can just feel the lip of the edge, so I'm hoping I'm cutting in the right place. I'm pretty sure that's the top there. <laughs> Let's find out. Hey! Alright. This is some iPhone stuff as well. I also ordered a screen and what have you as well for the phone. I got impatient and bought it locally. So what do we have here? It is just a touch screen. It just barely fits in this box. This goes out. Yep, there you go. LCD screen. So this is the iPhone 6S Plus. Let's have a look see what we actually got. It's not inside a case, like a plastic holder. A lot of them are, this one's not. But it does come inside a box with plenty of bubble wrap, so I shouldn't really be an issue. Let's have a look at it. So it doesn't have the parts fitted up here, which is what I'd normally expect there to be. Well, it looks alright otherwise, I suppose. This doesn't have those parts fitted up there, which is nice. When you, often you would get the little surround that goes around the camera, and it holds the camera in place, it's like stuck down. So, yeah, I suppose it's okay otherwise. I don't need it now anyway. Maybe I'll need it one day. I'm actually pretty sure that when I purchased this item, that this thing did say that it was complete with that little holder and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure it said that. I might have to go back and have a look. And of course it comes with these other things as well. I've got some spudgers. These little spudgers always come in quite handy actually. They're really quite good. Um, and you know, they're cheap. They always come with these things you get for nothing basically. And so they're really good for various things. And so if I damage one I don't really care because I've got loads of the things. I've also got these other little finger spudgers. Suction cup getting the screen off. Obviously it's just a screen replacement kit. A ejection tool for the SIM card, which is nice, and screwdriver. That's a crosshead, and here's the driver for doing the little screws at the bottom. I've got them called now. They've got a certain name. I forgot those. Anyway, yeah, thrilling, isn't it? That arrived really fast. Someone had this tape, um, Johnny Fix. Johnny Fix is a New Zealander. Um, if you haven't seen Johnny Fix, go look it up. Maybe I'll link it or something. Or Johnny, say something in the comments, say hello in the comments so people can find you. He's using something like this, or the same as this actually. And basically it's conductive tape, so you use this on like the little flex that goes down from the LCD screen um, to the, like, the flat flex stuff that's connected to it, so you can put this on. It's adhesive tape and it's conductive tape. So when you're trying to attach a flat flex to like a PCB, you'd tape it with this to hold it down, and then you'd heat it up with a hot bar or something. And the idea is to then melt them together and make it conduct. So there's been a few times about LCD issues, and having this tape would have probably allowed me to fix them. 
I've never had it, and because I saw Johnny had this stuff, I thought, I'm going to get some. Now, you notice it has an expiry on it. Maybe you can see it. Oh, it's a bit small, probably. So, it's only got like a year on it. I'm not likely to use it in the next year. We'll see how I go, but I'm going to leave it inside the bag to at least give it a chance to uh, avoid oxidisation or any problems like that, or moisture problems. So, we'll also leave it as it is in that bag, and I'm going to get it out until I absolutely need it. But, uh, thanks Johnny for pointing it out. If it's any good, I don't know. We'll find out. But this one is um, 2 millimeters. 2 millimeters by 10 meters, so 2 millimeters wide. And this also feels like a polystyrene box inside a bag. So I might have got carried away and bought a few iPhone screens. It's possible. All right, so this is another iPhone screen. And hopefully this will actually show you the difference between the two screens. Let's actually have a look. So we've got a protector as well, so like I did the other one. So that was the white one, this is the black one. All right. And maybe this is one I was thinking of. You know, sort of look. So this is the plastic holder I was mentioning when I did look to the other screen. So two different suppliers. So little scratches on the little plastic film. Hopefully it's only on the plastic film. And this one has got all the bits in here. So you've got the one around that sensor and around the camera as well, just there. Now got something to show you. I thought I'd get closer. See those in there? There's little plastics around there. And around there. So those are fitted on this one. So on the other screen I have to take them off the existing screen which I'm replacing. That part looks better. This is kind of what I was expecting with the other unit. But uh, anyway, different suppliers. The idea is to have a look at them, see how they come out. This one looks better. But now I've got a couple of iPhone screens spare, which I may or may not even need. And it's like the other screen, I've got a big spudger kit. So this I think is from Mauser. It is. Big dio bridge. It's a GBJ25M dio bridge. I've got somebody who's got some suspicions about something I'm fixing. Right, so this is all part of that thing I mentioned before with these devices. Right, so this device is giving a short circuit under high voltage. Now, I'm pretty sure it isn't the bridge rectifier, but as I was buying some stuff from Mauser anyway, and it didn't really add much to the cost. I bought some spares anyway, so these are what this thing uses, these big bridge ridge fires, 25 amps. And if I don't use them, then that's fine. I, um, I've got some big bridge ridge fires. Some big full bridge ridge fires, as Medi would say. <laughs> what else we got in here? Actually, has Medi even done that for a while? I think yes, I don't think Medi's even done that effect for a little while. He used to do it quite often. Well, I think just about every video. So that's the um, G4PC40S, not the K. So these are the Ks, and these are the Ss. Now, I think K was what it's supposed to have in there, but these were from AliExpress, so you don't quite know what you're getting. And these are the Ss, which is obviously not quite exactly the same device, but it's probably close enough. Now, I only have one, or well, I only got one, I'm not quite sure. And this got the packet here actually. It's an S8025L. Here we go. That's the TR220 parts I was talking about before. It's that a 25L. So these are the other part I wanted before I actually tried them because I wasn't completely sure those other ones are okay. I just don't trust them. So the GBJ25M it's a say, full bridge rectifier, 1000 volt rated, 25 amps, like I said. The S8025L, that's an SCR, 25 amp, 800 volt rated, and you know, it's like a thyristor, we want to call it. Then we've got the AUIRG4PC40S-E, which is the RGBT transistor switch. Got that? Now we've got this box, which seems to have had a bit of a hard life on the way here. It's a bit squashed. It probably wouldn't have mattered in this case. And let's see if I can do it with this. Sometimes I can. Depends how thick the tape is. Come on. Oh, 
the last little bit is going to fight me. Here we go. <laughs> last time when I got these, it had these in the corners to help protect it. Very nice. This little enclosure. Now I've shown this previously in my videos, my little project I work on. Let's actually get one out. So I've got these nice little the enclosures like this. All right, so they've got the panels that goes out of the back here. It's also got this open panel here for a screen, obviously. And I've got these ones, and I've also got some white ones. Well, cream, I suppose. I've got the cream one as well, cream variant. So these come in different versions. You can actually get with the panel still in here, like not removed. So you can put your own cutout in there for your own size panel. I've used these on my projects, and I've shown these previously in other videos. And I couldn't actually remember how many I've got, so I bought some more. I probably should have just, like, actually checked to see how many I've got, but I've probably got loads of these now. But these good little boxes, and I thought they're, they're nicely made. They go together really well. I quite like them. Quite robust. Happy with them. Nice. Big links down below. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters who make all this possible. I can buy all these items with their help. And also the YouTube members as well, obviously, because they're also contributing to the channel. You've got YouTube memberships and Patreon supporters are the two ways you can support the channel financially. As well as buying things that are linked down below. Those help me as well, because I get some affiliate commissions from those things. They don't cost you anymore, but I get a bit of a kickback from that. It's a small bit, you know. It might only be 10 cents or 20 cents an item or something like that, depends on what you're getting. But... It all helps, it, you know, it accumulates, I suppose. Thank you everyone that does financially contribute by buying things from the mailbag, supporting me on Patreon, YouTube memberships, even just clicking like, that is the support. Um, we can also do the thanks button. There's a thanks button down there. If you want to just click thanks, just do a one-off donation, no commitment, just do thanks. If you want to do all, if you want to do that, that's great. It helps my channel quite a bit. And obviously it's not just mailbag, it's all the stuff, mainly my biggest cost, right? The thing that costs me the most is when I want to buy a test gear. So this month I am absolutely skint because I found three bits of test gear that I wanted. Well, I actually found two. Somebody else told me about the third one. You know who you are, Ian? <laughs> Ian sent me an email about a piece of test gear which I've been watching out for and I bought one. And I, yeah, anyway, so I'm really skint right now. I've, I've spent all of my cushion money I normally have a bit of money sitting around as a buffer, you know, in case anything goes wrong, like, you know, car repairs or whatever you have to do, right? So, yeah, because of that, three bits of Hesky that come up, I basically spent all my buffer, and I've, all, I've got no buffer left. So, these are three nice bits of Hesky, so I'm looking forward to them arriving. But it's expensive, so this financial support by people donating to the channel is really helpful. I spent everything I've got, all the donations, the money I've already got, all that money went into those bits of test gear which I just purchased, right? So all those contributions, they allowed me to buy those bits of test gear. So thank you very much, everyone. Thumbs up. Catch you later. A-U-I-R-G-4-B... Oh, I got it right. A-U-I-R-G-4-P-C-7... No. A U I R G four P C four zero S hyphen E, which is the IGBT transistor switch. Got that?